Over 1300 years ago, there lived in Offaly a man whose name was Berachon. He was known as Berachon the Wise, for he could foretell the future. One night, he woke up screaming in his bed. His servant, his gilly, ran in and he said, Master, are you okay? I have had a vision. A vision that I'm going to be murdered in this very house. So who would murder you? You are a saintly man. The people of the island, they love you. It will not be an Irish man or a foreigner. It will be a demon. So what is this demon called? He is called the Mookal, and he will come on the night of a great storm. He will follow three men who seek shelter at three chieftains of the island. So don't you worry. If any demon comes to kill you, I will protect you. He made himself comfortable in the corner of the room, and he said, Nobi Buhra, sir, do not worry. I will protect you. I have sword and spear. And he turned around, and he fell asleep. Barracon, he turned away towards the wall, and soon he, too, managed to regain sleep. Outside, in the forest, a shadow darker than all others moved and sung quietly to itself. It could wait a year for its meal, for it lived for all eternity, and as it waited, it sung its song, the song of the Bukal. <laughs> Next morning, when Barakon woke up, the sun was shining through the window. It was a beautiful day. He jumped up and called to his servant, Gilly, come on, let's go fishing. No work today. The weather is fine. They walked through the forest towards a nearby lake. The Midlands of Ireland has many lakes. As they walked along, the gilly said, Sir, there should be a gone in Ashtuck. It's kind of strange. There's no bird song today. It's like something scared them away. It'll be just the sunlight. They'll be high in the sky, warming their wings. They caught many fish that day, and that night Barracon, he slept well. When morning came, the rain was pouring down. Barracon that day went back to what he always did when he wasn't telling the future for the kings and queens of Ireland. He wrote books. Many of our most ancient stories were passed down to us by people like Barracon working in lonely places with goose quill feather and calfskin vellum. It was very, very intricate work. You had to concentrate. He forgot completely about his dream. And the months flew by. Twelve months later, Barracon is finishing a story, putting the last dot on the final sentence, when something caught his attention outside the window. A youngster was running out of the trees towards his door. He cried out to Gilly, who was working in the kitchen. Gilly, Ascalandaris, open the door. Somebody comes. When Gilly opened the door, it was his own cousin standing there who said, You better come home quick, there's been an accident. Your father fell from his horse yesterday when he was going to market. Your mother wants you to come home. Gilly went in to Barracon and he told him the news. Barracon said, You must go home immediately, take this. He gave him a leather sack filled with silver and said, Come back in a month or two, whenever your father is better. Go now quickly, I hear thunder, a storm approaches. The young man, he left. Barracon, as he shut the door behind them, he saw them run into the trees. And then above the trees, he saw approaching grey clouds. The thunder was getting louder. After a while, he thought he heard something else in the woods. The sound of singing. It was the sound of the singing from his dream the year before. And then he remembered. He remembered the face of the demon. <laughs> Quickly, Barracon, he raced around the house. He locked every door. He shuttered every window. The wind now was scratching at the thatched roof. The wind, like a banshee's fingers, trying to get in. Rain poured down. The sound of thunder hurt his ears. He went into the kitchen. He said to himself, keep busy, keep busy. It was only a dream. It was only a dream. He got a great big cooking pot. A pot of plenty, a cauldron that he had in his home for when there were feasts. He dragged it over to the fire. It was so big you could hide under it if you wanted to. He pulled it onto the fire and filled it with vegetables and meat. He cooked up a beautiful Irish stew. All afternoon he worked on it, trying to keep his mind occupied. Night came. The storm got worse. Barracon ate the stew. It was delicious. 
He was surprised at his appetite. He was terrified. When he finished his meal, he took out a book of prayers and began to read. And that's when he heard the knock on the door. Open the door, let us in, will ya? Who's there? We are three men, we seek shelter from wind and rain, let us in. He went to the door and he looked through the keyhole. On the other side, there were three warriors. He could see their cloaks billowing in the wind and rain. They had steel helmets, shields, and battle axes beneath wide leather belts. The lightning was searing across the sky above their heads, illuminating them. Open the door, will ya? The dream was coming true. He had dreamt he would be attacked when three chieftains sought help. They would be followed by the demon, but he could not turn them away. Perhaps they could help him. Perhaps they could prevent it. He took the key from the ledge above the door. He unlocked it and the wind blew it in. The three warriors marched in and shut the door behind him. One was from the south, one was from the east, one was from the north. The one from the south said, Are you Barakon, the famous man who tells the future? We have been lost in the woods. The storm is terrible. We heard that your house was nearby. I am Barakon. Gentlemen, give me your cloaks and sit by fire. He took their cloaks and hung them on pegs on walls, smell of wet wool. Their weapons they placed against the stone wall, clang of steel on stone. And as they sat by the fire, he fed them up some stew from the cauldron. And he said, gentlemen, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. You are Barakon. I am Barakon. Thank you very much for welcoming us to your house. It's a dreadful storm out there. Gentlemen. Make yourself comfortable. Did you see anything out there? There was nothing out there. We could not even the devil himself could be out there tonight, said the chieftain from the east. It's not the devil I'm worried about. It's something far more deadly, said Barakon. What do you mean? He told them about his prophecy. And the three chieftains said that they would protect him. They said, why not finish the food in the cauldron and then they would clean it out. It was so big he could hide beneath it and they would stand guard through the night one by one. Barakon went to his room. When he returned, he noticed the three men hard at work, scouring out the pot. Then they turned the great cauldron upside down. As he went under beneath it, he said, Thank you, gentlemen. You'll be all right. Don't worry, Barakon. And they lowered the pot down upon him. Then they settled to guard him. They would take turns throughout the night, one by one. Underneath the pot, Barakon, he felt so confined, it was as if he was in a coffin. He could not hear anything. He fell to sleep. On the other side of the pot, the three chieftains, one by one, sat guard while the others slept. The hours ticked by. After midnight, the chieftain from the south, he thought he heard something at the front door. The wind had ceased, the rain too, it was the eye of the storm. It was a child's voice at the door. Oskalandoros, Oskalandoros, open the door, let me in, please. Please let me in. Who's there? I am a boy and I need help, sir, open the door. The chieftain went to the door, he looked through the keyhole, standing outside was a little boy. The little boy, he was terrified. The chieftain he had a kind heart. He took the key from the ledge above the door and he opened it. Little fellow, what are you doing there on your own? Where are your parents? Sir, I'm an orphan. I live in the woods. <laughs> and sir, the storm was knocked on the trees and my little heart fell down. <laughs> sir, please let me in. I've nowhere to go. It's the eye of the storm and I might die. I don't want to die. Sir, let me in, please. Like, invite me into your house. It's not my home, but you're welcome. No one could let a little boy stay out all night, especially a night like this. Come in, little man. He let the little boy come into the house. The chieftain shut the door behind him. The little boy looked round the room. He could see the other two warriors asleep and the great cauldron in the middle of the room turned upside down. Come and sit by the fire, boy. You must be freezing. Sir, you're so kind to let me in. I was so frightened down there. I thought I would die. You're all right, little fella. Sit by the fire. Here, take this blanket now and go to sleep. Settle down, you'll be all right. You didn't see anything out there in the woods when you were coming through. Our host here is terrified of some demon. I saw nothing, sir. Here, thank you for letting me in. You're very welcome. Sir? What? Before I go to sleep, I always like to sing a little song. It calms me. But 
I sing you a little song? Of course you can sing a song, boy. What are you going to sing? It's just a little song that comforts me. I learned it when I was a child. I can't remember who taught it to me. I've lived on my own for so long. Go on, then sing it if it makes you better, boy. If it makes you feel better, sing it, lad. Thank you. It goes like this. The little boy, he lowered his eyes and his head. And he started to sing. Just like this. That's the weirdest singing I ever heard in my life, little lad. It's really strange. It sounds like singing to do in the west of Ireland. But it's making me kind of sleepy. Go on, little man. Keep on singing. I think I'll go to sleep. I'll just close my eyes for a minute and I'll wake up. The chief of the north, he can take a watch. The little boy said, You have your little sleep. Sleep. The little boy said, Close your eyes and sleep. I'll just sing a little more. And he started to sing again. And as he started to sing, suddenly his teeth began to lengthen. The boy's face began to change. It grew lined and old and malicious. The body began to grain and skein and strength and twist and the fingers turned into rosebriar thorns. And suddenly standing there was this... <laughs> Underneath the pot, Barracon wakes up. He can hear it, the sound of the singing from his nightmare. It's no longer in his head. It's in the room. It's at the other side of the pot. He thinks to himself, perhaps the chieftains are just trying to scare me. You know what I'll do? I'll lift up the pot and I'll go boom. I'll lift up the pot and see what's happening. He put his hands on the inside edge of the cauldron and he lifted it up. And as he lifted it up, he said, this pot, this cauldron, it's gone real heavy. Why is it so heavy? And then he stuck his head out from underneath the cauldron. He looked around the room and he saw the chieftains asleep. And then he saw on the wall the shadow of the pot. And on top of the pot, was a shadow of something else. And then a voice above his head said, Barakhan, it's nothing personal. I just need feed! Next morning, the three chieftains, they woke up. The chieftain of the south, he jumped up. I fell asleep. Hey, lads, where's that little boy gone? And then he saw dried blood that had come from underneath the pot. Wake up, boys, wake up, wake up. There's something gone wrong. And the three chieftains jumped up. They lifted up the side of the cauldron and the three of them, they screamed in horror. They jumped back and ran out of the house. It took them another hour to get the courage to go back in. And when they walked back in and lifted the pot again, they blessed themselves. All that was left of Barakon were his bones. The three of them, they took the bones of Barakon the wise outside. And with the rising sun that day, they buried him bone by bone. There was one bone missing though, a rib bone. What they didn't realize is that when the buchel makes a kill, he always takes a little bit of takeaway. <coughs> Sucks the marrow from the bone. The three chieftains, they left Barakon's house that day after they buried him and never returned. 
Soon the house was consumed by forest. It is there somewhere, they say, near Clansast to this day, hidden deep in woodland. We say in Offaly, some evenings when the mist come towards you, sometimes if you listen, you can hear a singing voice in the mist. Sounds like this. Perhaps it's the bugle out there looking for his next feed. Happy Halloween.